Goodbye, Marcus. Wait! Welcome back to Q Dads, guys. It's me, Ben, and yes, Apple TV has just dropped an official Severance trailer, and I could not be more excited, but at the same time, so confused. Of course, we did a breakdown of the teaser trailer, so if you haven't seen that, I do recommend it. Go check out that little breakdown there. But of course, we will be touching on a few similar details in this as well. So hit that subscribe button because we will be covering every aspect of detail for this show as we possibly can, even if that does mean trawling through a redacted newspaper image on the screen to try and understand more about this TV series. So the trailer starts off with Milchek talking to Mark's outie about returning to Lumen, which I presume happens a week or two after the events of the finale in season one. And at the same time as this, we have Mark's innie, who seems to be running through the corridors as we saw in the teaser trailer, but this time manages to get into Miss Cobell's room and almost talks to the board in a way of alerting them to what he knows. Milchek instantly cuts the cord on this, but at this present moment, we do not know how long has passed since the events of the end of season one and this scene here. So has that been a week or two based on that newspaper? Or has it actually been a few months and it's taken a little bit more time for them to get back into the Severance headquarters and get this new global reform program running? Milchek then goes on to talk about a painful moment with the four of them becoming famous and actually unveils a new painting, which seems to show the four of these almost submerged whilst being knighted by Kia Egan. Now this is actually sand bathing, which is a ritual where people are buried in the sun from the neck down, and is some kind of healing ritual, allowing them to be changed by Mother Earth, especially during a solar eclipse as well, which is said to have healed sick individuals. So could this symbolise that Kia Egan and Lumen Industries are trying to heal these four individuals through the Severance Programme? Or are we looking at this completely wrong and actually it's some kind of torture device, a punishment for what they've done? We then hear about the new department being Severance Reform and with this Milchek shows Mark a heavily redacted newspaper. Which of course for you guys I've done a little bit of digging. So I've tried to understand some of the articles to the best of my ability but I will be looking at this as well. So if you do spot anything worthwhile that I haven't mentioned, please do let me know in the comments and let's have that conversation. So first of all, we see the photo of their outies, all four of them riding in a car, almost being paraded and celebrated amongst the residents of the town or city. And a bit of the article actually mentioned that the board were happy to listen and all four of them gave speeches about how grateful they are for the severance department and Lumen Industries. Now, the article does mention that this was a week ago, meaning that the story, when it was produced, was already a week old. But how old is this newspaper compared to Mark's Innie? Because that's the key bit of information that we don't quite know. But for the sake of this, we're going to presume that it's a similar time frame and it's about a week or two old. Now, there's a few little different bits towards the bottom of the newspaper that I can make out. Some even indicate about Mark's author brother-in-law, Rickon. Now, that's an awesome guy right there. But there's a bit towards the top that I couldn't quite make out, uh, but obviously there was an interesting article on the left. Now this was about the Baird Creek Bandit that was breaking in somewhere during work hours. Now presumably this is Lumen Industries, and it was carried on to mention that this was the fifth burglary this week. And I asked myself the question, who is this and what are they breaking into? If it is Lumen Industries, is this an ex-employee trying to get in and almost leak the truth? Find the key to all of this and break that severed link? Or is it someone breaking into an abandoned warehouse somewhere, looking for some kind of information? It's hard to tell with just these few lines, but I do think it makes quite an interesting side story, so I hope that this does appear in the second season. Now the one last kind of detail I wanted to mention about the newspaper, which was obviously the fact that we'll see later in the trailer, was this new severed reform programme being hit globally meaning that other countries are going to be taking part in the Severed program, which is great to see and hopefully allows the introduction of a lot more characters. Now, as they all reflect on being famous and also discuss the outside world being so different to theirs, we get a few scenes. One is with Mark's outie, who looks very inquisitive as he moves from different location, as well as Mark's innie talking about the plans to get Gemma out. 
Now, I think the key to all of this is about Gemma. And even when Mark's outie approaches Miss Cobell, basically saying to Mark that there's no honeymoon ending for all of this. Now, does that mean that Gemma is now too far gone? Is she in danger? Or, in fact, is she deeper into all of this than we even realise? And actually further in with the founders and the Egan family than Heli even realises. Now, there's lots of different shots as the trailer continues. And we obviously get a few scenes of the data refinement. And this is going to be included within the second season, which is great. And I also want to understand more about those numbers, what they mean, and how they connect to the human emotions even further. And yes, of course, we get to see the goats. Now, in the first season, they had that mystery goat room where a bunch of goats were being nursed. And I presume this is now the back end of that process. So for this, I'm just going to call it the farm. And we get to see loads of these goats roaming around the farm. And I asked the question, is this a satanic part of Lumin that connects them to the weird scenes that we saw in that waffle party in season one? Now, I will touch more on that in just a moment. Now, as we continue, we see Heli and this new guy in a room with Miss Cobell as they talk about the fears of what the capability of the innies have. And of course, Heli says that she does not fear them at all. And now there's some snippets that we see later in the trailer where it's fair to say that Heli is now consciously knowing what she does to Mark. Is she now severed again or is she playing the game? Because it seems that there's a little scene between her and Mark that gets a little bit more intimate than we realise and may suggest that she has ulterior motives. We see some medical tools, which again, is that for the new people that are coming in that we've seen in the trailer? Or is this for tightening the leash, as Milchek puts it, and that they're going to start cracking down on some of the previous people and their behaviours and almost revert everyone back before they were severed? Then in the farm, Mark's innie gives a bit of a rally speech to the new people which we get to see a quick clip of someone with some kind of goat headdress, which brings me back to the satanic point. So in the first season, we saw the waffle party, which was very weird and unusual. And that was obviously some kind of praise to the Egans and the founders. And why is this something similar? So the person that we see in charge of making these rituals and these worships and make these sacrifices happen, because goats are commonly associated with the devil or evil. But I'm not 100% convinced yet. It's a bit of a wild theory, but I want to put that out there for you guys. It's most likely that these individuals are probably just forgotten innies and have been moving around the halls secretively and potentially free within this farming department, just living their normal lives, using the goats to survive. People that have previously been severed who have just been pushed aside. I'm not sure where to go. Again, I'm just brainstorming some ideas. So hit me in the comments and absolutely we'll keep that conversation going. And then, yes, we end the trailer with a final goodbye as Milchek allows Mark's Innie to exit through the lift. Now, I don't think this is a final goodbye as in we won't be seeing Mark's Innie for the last time. But more the fact that Milchek has probably just dropped some very crucial information to Mark's Innie as he's about to leave. And probably information that he has nothing he can do to control it. So I think that scene is probably just a bit of a mic drop for Milchek. And then, yes... We get the last quick clip of Miss Huang joking about the fact that she's a child because that's when she was born as Mark W questions her about being a manager. It's just quite, it's just a hilarious scene actually and a great introduction to these characters and I think they are going to be well loved in the second season. So the final point I want to touch on is about the fact that everybody is wearing blue passes, which is fine. But as we get the introduction earlier on with Gwendolyn Christie's character, She's actually wearing a green pass. Now, she does look a little bit out of time and a little bit rough and worse for wear, as well as ringing a cowbell. So I'm not sure where her character is going to fit into the story and whether it's going to be some kind of flashback to a previous department or a side department in another country, as they have alluded to global reforms. Or is she one of these forgotten innies trapped within Lumen? Now, it's just an interesting detail because I know there's a lot of theories out there on Reddit. Uh, about the passes and the fact that Irving has a slightly older pass than Mark, Helly or Dylan. So I just wanted to mention it out there. But also it's worth noting that actually on IMDb all of our characters are only scheduled for 19 episodes overall. Where the new characters are scheduled for 10. Meaning that there is going to be an episode within season 2 where we don't see Mark, Dylan, 
Helly or Irving. And that will be interesting to see. So overall, guys, I'm going to throw this right back to you. It's been lovely to talk about this, and I'm going to be diving deeper as the weeks go on before that season is released in January. But I would love to know your thoughts and opinion as well, because me and Steve love Severance, and we're so looking forward to it coming out. So let me know your thoughts on all the points I've touched on and anything that I might have missed. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, because we will be giving you our usual episode breakdowns as well as some other additional videos where we try and theorise as best as we possibly can. So as always, I'll catch you next time with something new.